Right, so let us uh, begin. Uh, we had started looking at the notion of differentiability of functions of several variables. So, we gave examples for a function f defined in a domain d in R2. So, there exists functions f say that f is not continuous. But its partial derivatives exist. So, that means existence of partial derivatives is not good enough. We need a stronger uh, definition of what we should be calling as differentiability of functions of several variables. So, let us go back to one variable. For a function of one variable, we said f is differentiable at a point x is equal to uh, say c. If we can write f of x plus h or uh, at c, so let us uh, write at the point c, c plus h equal to f of c plus h times f dash of c plus some error if this is equal to this for every h not equal to 0, where the function epsilon the error epsilon h goes to 0 as h goes to 0. So, this is the uh, analytical way of uh, saying the differentiability of a function of uh, one variable and this uh, was the existence of derivative. So, we will take this as the definition for two variables as follows. So, let us write definition for a function f defined in a domain nice domain. So, that everything is ok, uh, but it can be an open ball around a point. So, f is a function of two variables is said to be differentiable at a point uh, say uh, x naught y naught belonging to d if the following happens one. Both the partial derivatives exist f dash x at x naught y naught, f dash y at x naught y naught exists. Both the partial derivatives exist, and second, something like that uh, error thing happens in both the variables. So, let us write uh, what does it mean? It means that f of x naught plus h y naught plus k. So, that is the value of the function at a nearby point should be equal to the value of the function at the point plus in one variable we had h into f dash. So, here there are two variables. So, each variable will contribute something. So, it is the increment in h, uh, x variable is h. So, h times partial derivative of f with respect to x at x naught y naught plus the second variable gives k times f partial derivative with respect to y at x naught y naught plus error functions. So, for both, so there are two error functions h times epsilon 1 h k plus k times epsilon 2 times h k exists. So, second condition is that 
the value at a nearby point can be written as the value at that point plus h times f dash in the direction of x, k times f dash in the direction of y plus errors like in one variable, but here <coughs> you know, that h times <coughs> is in incorporated inside this thing. So, uh, where epsilon 1 h k, they are functions of two variables they go to 0 as h and k both go to 0. So, this is what uh, the differentiability of a function of two variable means. We are trying to take care of each variable right and similar to the definition in one variable. So, at a nearby point, so this is a value at a nearby point, the increment in the x direction is h. So, h times f dash in the direction of x, increment in y is k. <coughs> so, k times f dash uh, partial derivative with respect to y, uh, x naught, y naught plus the errors uh, with respect to both the increments, uh, which errors go to 0 as h and k go to 0, right. Okay. So, let us uh, look slightly complicated, but it is very much uh, uh, amenable in the sense that it is very much similar to the one variable definition. So, let us uh, have some observations. So, note <coughs> let us see whether this is good enough for definition or not. So, if f is differentiable at x naught y naught, then this uh, okay. first of all differentiability requires that the partial derivatives exist. So, if the partial derivatives do not exist either of it at a point, then the function is not going to be differentiable uh, implies f x at x naught y naught and the partial derivative with respect to y x naught y naught exists. So, uh, as a consequence is a necessary uh, requirement. So, hence if either of these partial derivatives do not exist, then f is not differentiable. So, this is remark 1. So, let us look at uh, some example. Um, okay. So, example let us look at uh, a simplest one. Uh, this is uh, essentially extension of the one variable. So, let us look at the function f x y equal to mod x plus mod y for every x y. So, is a function of two variables. It is clear that uh, f is continuous everywhere, uh, let us say at 0, 0 also in particular. It is a continuous function everywhere continuous, right. Is it okay for everybody it is continuous function mod x? plus mod y as a function of two variables it is continuous. Okay. Let us look at the partial derivatives. So, what about partial derivatives? At the point 0 0. So, I want to calculate f dash of x uh, at the point 0 0. So, what will be that? So, the partial derivative will be limit h going to 0 f of 0 plus h in the direction x 0 minus f at divided by h right. There is a definition of the partial derivative at 0 0 increment in the direction of x minus the value of the function at that point divided by so, what is this? This is a limit 
h going to 0, what is f of 0 plus h? So, that is mod h, right? That is 0 divided by h, okay? And that does not exist. Right? Why it does not exist? Depending on h is positive or negative, this limit is either 0 or a minus 1 or 1. So, left limit is not same as, so it is mod x basically looking at it. So, the similarly, f dash of y 0 0 does not exist. So, both the partial derivatives do not exist. So, this function hence f x y equal to mod x plus mod y is not differentiable at 0 0, because the partial derivatives itself do not exist. Okay. So, uh, as per definition, function to be differentiable, first of all partial derivatives must exist. Let us make another observation. Look at, uh, so let us suppose let f be differentiable. Let x 0 y 0. Then we have with a nearby point x 0 plus h y 0 plus k. So, let me bring all the terms on the one side except this error terms, everything else on one side, like function of one variable. So, minus f at x 0, y 0, minus h times partial derivative in the direction of x, minus k uh, f dash in the direction y x 0, y 0. So, that is looking back. So, these terms I have brought on the other side, the right hand side is h is equal to h times epsilon 1 h k plus k times uh, epsilon 2, the error function, so epsilon 2 h k, right. I just taken some terms on the left hand side and are leaving error. Now, in one variable, um, when we look at the derivative, it is f at the nearby point minus f of x divided by the increment limit, <coughs> that is the limit of the secant slope. So, let us, so what is the increment here? In the h direction, it is h, k direction, it is uh, x direction is h, k direction k. So, total increment is square root of h square plus k square, if you take as a distance in R2. So, let us divide by that. So, let us look at absolute value of f x naught plus h y naught plus k minus f at x naught y naught. Probably let me put it this in the bracket, so that it looks very much similar to one variable thing plus uh, okay, plus h times f dash of x x naught y naught plus k times of f dash with respect to y at x naught y naught divided by x square plus k square. So, I have taken <coughs> divided by this and taken the absolute value. So, that will be equal to, so in the right hand side that will be equal to absolute value of h epsilon 1 h k plus k epsilon 2 h k divided by square root of h square plus k square, right? Just divided and I am trying to bring it something similar to function of one variable, okay? Now, this thing on the right hand side, I can uh, separate that out is less than or equal to mod h divided by h square plus k square 
mod of epsilon 1 h k plus mod k divided by h square plus k square mod of epsilon 2 h k. Got triangle inequality less than or equal to. Okay. Now let us observe. Doesn't matter actually, but mod h divided by this quantity is always less than or equal to one. Got the numerator is always bigger than or equal to numerator, so it is less than or equal to mod epsilon one h k plus mod epsilon two of h k. Right because mod h by this mod k by this square root of h square plus k square is less than or equal to 1 and this goes to 0 as h and k go to 0 0 right. So, what we are saying is differentiability implies that this quantity on the left hand side goes to 0 as h and k go to 0 0. So, this is very much similar to the one variable definition okay. and so it does not require and this does not require the knowledge of uh, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and so on. So, it says f differentiable implies that this quantity the partial derivative should exist. Once they exist you form this uh, quotient and that should go to 0. Okay. So, that will tell that this is differentiable. Uh, that differentiability implies this and the interesting thing is one can prove the converse and say that if this condition is satisfied then function is differentiable right. So, let us uh, we will not prove that, but we will just list it. So, uh, f differentiable. So, in fact at x naught y naught is equivalent to saying the partial derivatives exist and this quantity to minus ok um, at, at x naught y naught plus h times the partial derivative with respect to x. I am just writing again and again, so that it gets uh, uh, clear and uh, plus k times partial derivative with respect to y divided by square root of h square plus k square absolute value goes to 0 as h and k go to 0 0. This is uh, not we have just now shown one way it is quite easy to show other way around also it is not difficult one has to just manipulate a few things. So, we will leave that uh, we will assume that. So, whenever we want to check whether a function is differentiable or not we will check these two conditions are satisfied or not ok right. So, this is like existence of partial derivatives and something goes to 0 ok right. Let us uh, look at something more uh, consequence of this definition 3. So, let f be differentiable at x naught y naught. Then once again let us go back to the definition and uh, look at this uh, equation. Okay. Or let us go back to the original thing uh, that was this one, condition two. Okay. So let us uh, rewrite this. What I want to do is I just want to bring one term on the left hand side, everything else on the right hand side. Okay. So let me do that and uh, see if I can copy and that equation and without doing much effort 
evolutionary test. Okay, good. So this is what we have got. Okay, so let us shift. So implies f of x naught plus h y naught plus k minus f at x naught y naught is equal to h times something f x. Now this uh, x naught y naught plus k times f y x naught y naught plus h times epsilon one plus k times uh, epsilon two. Okay. Now let us take the limit of both sides as h and k go to zero zero. What happens? So limit of the left hand side. So limit h k going to zero zero of the left hand side. What is the left hand side? F at the nearby point minus F at x naught y naught is h times something. H goes to zero. So the first term goes to zero. Second term is k times f dash partial derivative that goes to zero. H times k times everything goes to zero. So this limit is equal to zero because all the terms on the right hand side go to zero as h and k go to zero zero. So what does this mean? We are saying f at a nearby point minus f at that point, the distance goes to zero, right? That means the function is continuous at the point x not y not. Okay, so implies f is continuous at x zero y zero. So this notion of differentiability does imply the function is continuous. So this seems to be a good enough uh, definition for differentiability. All right. There is another uh, uh, way of checking something is differentiable or not, and that is uh, only a sufficient condition. So probably uh, let me uh, look at the slides and uh, show you. Okay. So this is one variable definition, and uh, so this is the two variable definition that we just now said. Uh, here the point taken is AB. So at a nearby point. Okay, there should exist error functions epsilon one and epsilon two, such that the value at a nearby point is equal to the value at that point plus the increment in the x direction h partial derivative k partial derivative h times epsilon one plus k times epsilon two. And we said that this is uh, equivalent to by taking everything on the one side, dividing and taking the limit, so it goes to zero, right? So differentiability implies that this uh, goes to zero, and conversely is also true. So we'll we'll uh, we're assuming that fact, okay? Right. Uh, for example, uh, here is another example. Look at this function f x y equal to x square plus y square square root. This function is continuous at zero zero, right? As x goes to zero, y goes to zero, this goes to zero zero. Obviously, it is a continuous function. Okay. If you want to write epsilon delta definition, you can write down, right? Epsilon equal to delta. That will be okay. This is not differentiable at zero zero once again because the partial derivatives do not exist. When you want to calculate partial derivative at zero zero, you will put y equal to zero, square root of x square. So what will be that? That will be mod x. So that is not differentiable at zero zero. Similarly, so this is not differentiable at zero zero because the partial derivatives do not exist. We already had one example. Let us look at this example. This is f x y equal to x square plus y square sine of one over x square plus y square as x y not equal to zero zero because we are dividing at zero. The value is zero. Is this function continuous? At zero zero, right? Because the value at zero is zero. If I take the absolute value, sine is bounded by one. 
So, it's just square root of, it's just x square plus y square which goes to, so it's bounded by x square plus y square which goes to 0, 0. So, limit at 0, 0 is 0 which is the value of the function, so this function is continuous. Let us find whether this uh, is differentiable or not, right. So, what about the partial derivatives? How do I find partial derivative with respect to say x? So, y equal to 0, okay. It is x square sin 1 over x square. So, is that differentiable with respect to x? So, x square sin 1 over x square, right? y is 0. So, minus the value at 0 is 0 divided by x limit of this x goes to 0. That will be the partial derivative at the point 0 with respect to x, right. And that this x cancels where still x is there. So, it is less than or equal to limit of x, right. So, x dominates power is 2 here, sign is bounded by 1. So, which goes to 0, right. So, even as a function of one variable x square sin 1 over x square is differentiable with respect to x at the point 0. So, that says this is also differentiable. So, partial derivative exists at 0 and is equal to 0 with respect to x for this function. Similarly, the partial derivative with respect to y also exists and is equal to 0 at 0, 0. We want to check whether this as a function of two variables is differentiable at 0, 0 or not. So, let us try to apply that uh, criteria that we developed just now. So, I want to look at f at a nearby point near 0, 0. So, h k minus f at 0, 0 minus h times par partial derivative. I do not have to put dash actually when I am writing partial derivative both symbols I should not be putting 0, 0 minus k times partial derivative with respect to y at 0, 0 divided by h square plus absolute value of this. If that goes to 0, then the function is differentiable at the point 0, 0 as a function of two variables. So, what is this equal to? What is the function? at a point h k. So, this is h square plus k square sin of 1 over plus k square f at 0 0 is 0 partial derivative at 0 is 0 partial derivative at y is 0. So, square root of h square plus k square right. So, this quantity is equal to this cancels out only square root is left. So, h square plus k square absolute value sin of 1 over square root of h square plus k square, right. No, this is h square plus k square is square root of h square. So, oh the, the square root does not matter actually that is immaterial, okay, yeah that is an effective thing. So, this is. So, and that is less than or equal to sin is bounded. So, it is less than or equal to square root of h square plus k square and that goes to 0 as h and k go to 0, 0, right. So, this function, right. So, f is differentiable at 0, 0. So, this is a function as a function of two variables. So, we have checked it by checking that the partial derivatives exist, both the partial derivatives exist and this quantity goes to 0 as h k go to 0, 0. So, this is a differentiable function. So, that is uh, this function we just now checked is uh, differentiable. So, we can check that it is differentiable, okay.